That day of terror at the Discovery Channel. The gunman shot dead after he took hostages at the channel's headquarters outside Washington, D.C. this afternoon. James Lee was his name. A self-styled environmental anarchist, Lee had a history of harassing Discovery. He was arrested during a one-man protest of the channel in 2008. And now evidence of Lee's murky motivations is beginning to emerge, including an online manifesto. In it, he cites an author who we talked with tonight. John Donvan has our report. Say this for the Discovery Network. Locked down for long hours today. A gunman somewhere in the guts of its headquarters. Police taking up position outside. Hostages grabbed in its lobby. Everyone who could evacuating. Move as far away from the building as you can. Hundreds of employees, plus the children in the full-time daycare. Excuse us. Amidst this confusion, amidst this uncertainty, say this for Discovery, the channel never blinked. American Chopper. This is what was on its air throughout the whole scary afternoon, uninterrupted. Back off! American Chopper. Even as news choppers hovered overhead and details emerged about the gunman, said to be this man, this is his MySpace page, James Lee, a self-styled environmental anarchist who had harassed Discovery in the past, a one-man protester arrested in 2008 after hurling thousands of dollars into the air outside Discovery, setting off a frenzy. His complaint being, apparently, that Discovery does not focus enough programming on saving the planet by not, and this is from something he wrote, encouraging the birth of any more parasitic human infants and the false heroics behind those actions. Patrick Irvine, who worked at Discovery at the time, remembers seeing Lee. He was under the belief that Discovery was propagating the exploitation of the planet by promoting uh, procreation. And also he referred to them many times uh, as committing war crimes. Lee's MySpace page also cites as inspiration a book called My Ishmael, a novel about an intelligent gorilla who shares wisdom with the human race. It has earned its author a small but devoted following. Not that he's ever heard of James Lee or understands why he would do this. I don't know why he happened to latch on to my book in particular. It's not easy to see how James Lee did take away what he took away from it. Uh, it it's, so, it's such a distortion of uh, I Ishmael. The thing is, while outside none of us could see much of anything, inside they had security cameras going. And David Levy, a Discovery executive who stayed inside after everyone else left, could see that it was Lee and he recognized him. When you heard who it was, given that this guy's got a track record of harassing, did, was your sense of, oh, this guy again? Yeah, it was. And we were able to identify him right away because he was standing up. And so we had his uh, picture on our security bulletin board so we knew who he was right away and we were very familiar with him and, and uh, I, I wasn't surprised but it was still a very scary situation. There were three hostages, two Discovery employees and one who was a security guard but the police were not sharing any but the most basic details. They knew that Lee seemed to be carrying explosives, some boxes and some knapsacks. He was wearing uh, what appeared to be metallic uh, canister devices uh, on, his, uh, on his front and back. We are in negotiations with him currently, um, and those negotiations are ongoing. We don't know what they said in those conversations, but the talking apparently went on for hours. And then finally, after about four hours, something happened to end this. We know that not because we okay. could see it, but because we could hear it, barely. And when I say barely, we're going to play you the tape now. Listen very closely. Our camera was on the building. That beeping is a crosswalk signal. Well, Those voices, the voices of reporters. But then this sound. It's a single gunshot. Listen again. And not 15 minutes later, the police approached the media's gathering point and said, quite simply. Approximately uh, uh, 10 minutes ago, the suspect was shot by police officers. The hostages were not hurt. They ran as the police burst in and shot Lee, which they did, they explained later, because he had made a threatening move. He pulled out uh, the handgun that he came in with um, and pointed it uh, at one of the hostages. And that was it. Crisis diffused. Let me just say on behalf of the company, thank you very much 
to law enforcement and Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, all of our employees are accounted for. Not that it's quite over yet. Inside, there were still those boxes and knapsacks, which this fire department official told me could still be bombs, so they would need to be checked out. We may send the robot in to disrupt the package, oh. or we may send a, a bomb technician in, in FLAC, uh, to, to um, destabilize so it. So we're talking about, it's going to be dark. By, this is going to take hours. Yeah, it, there's, there's no time frame to put on something like this, and there's certainly no rush. So that's where it stands now. Bomb experts working through the night inside this building, actually detonating some of the devices Lee left behind. But the programming still uninterrupted. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Silver Spring, Maryland. The Discovery Channel's horrific day. A statement was released tonight from one of the hostages, Jim McNulty, a senior writer at TLC. Quote, I thank you all for your concern during these harrowing hours, he said. Our thanks to John Donvan for that report.